Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So I've been doing little labs for Silicon Dojo where we parse web pages. I've done labs where we parse RSS feeds. But oh my golly, here's the question. How the hell do you parse PDF files with Python and ChatGPT? And the answer is, and the answer is, it takes about 27 lines of code. And actually, most of this code could uh, could get ripped out, and this is absolutely phenomenal. So I installed I installed this uh, this plugin uh, up here. Uh, this plugin actually takes PDF files uh, and then um, turns them into text files, right? So basically, here uh, I'm using Fitz the document. I open this irs.pdf file. Uh, I take all the text in that that PDF file and actually write it to an irs.txt file file and that is what we get right here so this this big old pdf file gets turned into this text file which for me as a technology professional that's nice right text text is easier to deal with than pdf uh, but the problem is uh, whenever you get around to parsing things is okay how the hell do i have my code deal with this now right now, the valuable thing about things like web pages is you have those html tags so you can parse based off of html tags or rss you also you have xml tags and rss the problem is, is when you just have like text like this how the hell do you parse off of this and the interesting thing too is so you'll notice with this right i added a name bob t robert address all that kind of thing. The interesting thing is that actually somehow kind of gets saved at the bottom. It doesn't it doesn't get saved up here, right? So we have last name, right? You'll notice last name, there's nothing after it. Address, there's nothing after it. For some reason with a PDF file, it actually gets saved all the way down uh, at these particular lines. And so you're sitting there going, Argh. okay, so I turn the PDF, PDF into text, but how am I gonna parse it? How am I gonna parse it? I'm going to use ChatGPT, right? This is the kind of stuff ChatGPT is awesome for. Uh, so we create a system, a role of you are entering data into a database. We say, what is the first, middle, and last name of the person and their address in this form? Should be in a Python dictionary. First, first name, middle, middle name, last, last name, address. Pop it out, and then we're going to print. And so we come over here. I do have this whole janky ass lab setup. <laughs> this is the worst lab setup. It is, it's the worst lab setup, but it's okay. Anyways, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the run. Right, run, so it goes through and it prints out everything that it finds. And then look at this, first name is Bob, middle name is T, last name is Robert, and the rest is 123 Main Street, Anytown, North Carolina, 28801 all there and right and since this is a response right i could have this dumped directly into a database i could have this dumped into an html form so that then a secretary or an admin assistant could then uh, make any kind of edits or modifications as need be right so you could have an admin assistant that has one screen with this form open basically they could hit you know process everything could get printed out into an HTML form with the values auto-populated, and then they could just simply look at the, the PDF and look at the HTML form, verify everything is correct, and then hit submit. How much faster would that be for digitizing an office? Uh, think Again, think about, oh, think about doctor's offices or any place that would have lots and lots of digital documents, but that would be in PDF form. This could be incredibly valuable for, or imagine if they have a lot of paper documents. So this way you could literally, you could scan the paper documents so that they're PDF files. Then once they're PDF files, run them through this routine and you might be able to get just a tremendous amount of value out of that. Uh, so yeah, so that's, um, that's basically some of the cool stuff that you can do again with, uh, with Python modules and, uh, chat GPT, trying, trying to find useful things for chat GPT. Everybody's like, AI is amazing. And I keep saying, yeah, but like, what does it actually do? <laughs> but like, no, but seriously, what can I use chat GPT for? And one of the things I can do is help it support parsing, um, uh, PDF files. But again, this is the other thing that I really want you to understand with things like ChatGPT is a lot of folks keep saying just, just have ChatGPT 
do whatever. The important thing you need to understand is ChatGPT is a subsystem. It is, is part of a much larger system. So we have to have some kind of data store, some type of document store that has these documents. These documents then have to get fed into a script like this. Then we have to have a module or something that takes those PDF documents, turns them into text. Then from there, that does then does get fed to ChatGPT. But then when we get the response back, we then need to do something more than simply print it out on a screen. Again, put it to an HTML form, dump it directly into a database, something like that. And so ChatGPT is a singular component of an overall system that you'll use AI or a large language model for. So this whole idea that just, just have AI do it, it kind of misses a couple of points. Um, so anyways, I think that's cool. I think that is what we call geek sexy. Uh, if you like these videos, give us a thumbs up. If you don't like these videos, uh, give us a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe, share, the whole nine yards. And we're having classes on these. Again, every every week, Tuesday we have uh, classes, Thursday we have labs. Uh, we're gonna start having full day classes pretty soon. Uh, so take a look at Silicon Dojo if you're interested in that. And with that, hey, look at that. I can see me, I can see my reflection. Anyways, I'll see you, I'll see you, see you later.